This is fascinating. We have this integral that I have no idea how to evaluate. x over e to the x minus 1. How do you even begin to integrate that? And amazingly, they want us to prove that this integral evaluates to pi squared over 6. Where is this pi coming from? Well, who? I'm not sure how to start, but this pi squared over 6 looks familiar. It looks like we have seen this sometime before in our life. And you guys may know that pi squared over 6 is actually equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the perfect squares starting with 1. And Euler was the very first person to prove this using a very creative intuition of treating infinite series as a polynomial in some sense. So the problem is asking us to prove that this integral is equal to 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on. That's what pi squared over 6 is. Since we want to prove this integral to be this to be this summation, it may I guess it may be smart for us to maybe somehow to incorporate some kind of series or some summation into the expression inside the integral. So if we can have perhaps maybe some summation inside the integral of some value dx, maybe then we can trade the summation and integral given that conditions are right for us to do so. And maybe we can show that this integral is actually 1 over n squared. And maybe that's what we're shooting for. So how can we forcibly make some summation appear inside our integral? Well, you may remember the summation e to the u. e to the u, the Taylor series representation of e to the u, as summation from n equals to 0 to infinity of u to the nth power over n factorial. And I guess we can somehow try to incorporate this inside our integrand. And writing, just replacing e to the x with this expression isn't going to do much because we can't really bring the summation outside. So I guess we can try to write the entire expression, to write the entire integral. So write the entire integral as maybe e to the natural log of x over e to the x minus 1 dx because, as you know, e and natural log can cancel out. So writing it like this and writing it like this are the same thing. And then we can maybe try to change this into the series u to the nth power over n factorial, so n equals to 0 to infinity of, in this case, our u is natural log of x over e to the x minus 1. So we want to raise this entire thing to the nth power over n factorial dx. And I guess we can try to bring the summation outside. But how do we even evaluate? How do we even evaluate integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x over e to the x minus 1 to the nth power dx? What do we do with this? And I don't really see how, because natural log raised to some power, I'm not sh I can't think of any easy way of evaluating that. And even if we break apart this thing into natural log of x minus natural log of e to the x minus 1, I don't think we are accomplishing a lot. So I don't think this method is going to work. But what have we learned? What have we learned from this attempt? This attempt failed because we, I really can't find a way of going on with this integral. But what did we learn from approaching it like this? We learned that maybe we can incorporate some kind of series into our integral, bring that outside, so bring this summation outside, and maybe try to evaluate the integral that's left. And that's what our plan is. So why don't we try to do so with not e to the u, e to the u doesn't seem to work out, but with some other table series. And there's one more thing I want to point out. The integral that's left, when we switch the summation and integral, so this, uh, this expression, has to be something that we can integrate from 0 to infinity. So whatever Taylor series we try to establish within our integral has to have some expression that's familiar to us, something that we can actually integrate. Keeping this in mind, let's see if there's any other Taylor series that we can utilize. Huh. Well, this expression looks somewhat close 
to a over 1 minus r. And as you know, a over 1 minus r is the summation of infinite geometric sequence, so summation from n equals to 1 to infinity, of a r to the n minus 1, when the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1. And I guess we can change this, change this expression to 1 minus r, like follows. So we can write this as summation from 0 to infinity of x over 1 minus e to the x, so change it to the form 1 minus r, and we can just simply put negative sign dx. But what's wrong with this? Why is this approach not going to work? Well, that's because our absolute value of the common ratio has to be less than 1. And in our case, our common ratio is e to the x, and as x goes from 0 to infinity, as x goes from 0 to infinity, infinity, e to the x is not going to be less than 1. e to the x is going to be 1 or above. So this approach is not going to work. So when we let the common ratio be e to the x, it's not going to work. Wait, but what if the common ratio is e to the negative x? When common ratio is e to the negative x, then our value of the common ratio is going to be less than 1 for x between 0 and infinity. So if we can somehow change this such that we have e to the negative x instead of e to the x, maybe we can work with that. And we can. Because we can simply multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by e to the negative x. Then e to the x times e to the negative x is going to become 1. And we're going to have 1 minus e to the negative x like 1 minus r. So let's do so. We have to multiply e to the negative x to the top as well. So let's write this down. So we're going to have summation from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative x over over 1, e to the x times e to the negative x is 1, minus e to the negative x. So let's write that down. 1 minus e to the negative x dx, and now it's in the form a over 1 minus r, where absolute value of r is less than 1. And of course, a over 1 minus r is summation from n equals to 1 to infinity of a r to the n minus 1. So we have integral from 0 to infinity of the summation from n equals to 1 to infinity of a r to the n minus 1. In our case, a is x times e to the negative x. So we have x times e to the negative x times r to the n minus 1. Our r is e to the negative x. So we have e to the negative x to the n minus 1's power dx. And because whenever we have power series, like for geometric series or Taylor series representation of e to the x, we have a uniform convergence. And uniform convergence allows us to switch the integral and the summation, integral and the infinite summation. So we can simply switch the infinite summation and integral because the power series uniformly converge. And we have x times e to the negative x times e to the negative x times to the n minus 1, n minus first power, which is e to the negative x n power plus x dx. And we can break this apart. Let me just break this part. e to the negative x times e to the negative x n. And we can break this expression to e to the negative x n and e to the x. And e to the negative x n times e to the x is 1. So they go away. So we have summation from n equals to 1 to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative xn dx. And what do we have to show? We have to show that this integral evaluates to summation from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared or pi squared over 6. So we want to have 1 over n squared for our summation. So we want this integral to evaluate to 1 over n squared. So if we can show if we can show that this integral, so integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative x and dx is 1 over n squared, we are done. Now, there are many ways of approaching this. You can use integration by parts. That's an easy way. So you can use integration by parts. But the way we are going to use, which is slightly quicker, is using the gamma function using the gamma function. And you may realize that this integral looks very similar to gamma of n, which is integral from 0 to infinity 
of x to the n minus 1 times e to the negative x dx because we have e to the negative something here and we have x to the first power right here and we know that gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial so if we can somehow write this integral in the form of gamma function we can evaluate that instantaneously as n minus 1 factorial so let's do so we have to have e to the negative x so instead of xn, let's change that to u. So let's make u substitution u equals to xn. So we have e to the negative variable. And that's telling us that x is equal to u over n. And dx, differentiating both sides, is going to be 1 over n du. So what do we have? We have x going from 0 to infinity. Because u is x times n, when x is 0, u is 0. When x is infinity, u is infinity. And we have x is u over n, so x is u over n, and we have e to the negative u, this was intentional, and dx is 1 over n du. And we have integral from 0 to infinity, we can get 1 over n squared outside, and we have e, u times e to the negative u du. And what is this? That's gamma of 2. That's gamma of 2 because we have u to the n minus 1's power. In our case, we have u to the 2 minus 1 and times e to the negative u du. That's gamma function evaluated at n of 2. And gamma of 2, and gamma of 2 is 2 minus 1 factorial, 2 minus 1 factorial, or 1 factorial, or 1. So we simply get 1 over n squared as this integral. And of course, you can always use integration by parts if you did not know about gamma function. So we have shown that this is summation from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And Euler kindly proved for us that this is equal to pi squared over 6. And we are done. So we know we have proven that this integral uh, from 0 to infinity of x over e to the x minus 1 dx is pi squared over 6.